welcome to the Irish in the UK. Coming up on the show this week, we are at Kylie's brand new Irish bar in Manchester. We'll be finding out about the Nile Mellon Trust and the wonderful work they do in South Africa. Now, Father Paddy McMahon from St John's Roman Catholic Church in Charlton recently celebrated 50 years in the priesthood and what a great celebration he had. But first up, we're off to the Leeds Iris Centre for a horseshoe pitching competition. This sport has really grown over the years with teams travelling across from Ireland to take part in a full competition over the weekend. They'll be playing for the Eddie Stapleton Memorial Cup. Eddie was heavily involved with horseshoe pitching in Leeds for many years and sadly passed away earlier on this year. Seamus, how long has horseshoe pitching been going here in Leeds? Roughly seven years. And it's really taken off, hasn't it? It's taken off, but not as good as we wanted to. We need more youth. Yeah. So tell me how much involved now. You know, we've seen the lads here throwing today. Uh, how much training and effort and dedication goes into it? We train every Saturday and every Thursday. Two hours, roughly. OK. All year round? No. Six weeks before, before Christmas, we finished training, and we start again after Patrick's Day. Right, OK. And then, of course, you've got an international match going on here today because you've got uh, a team over from Ireland. Yes, we're trying to be as good as them. We're getting there. We're not there yet, but we will get there. Now, of course, yourself and Jim here has kind of is head of the sport, let's say, here. You've got a great team in Leeds, but you kind of head it up, don't you? Without Jimmy Henry and Charlotte Arty, there would be no team. They're the men that keeps it going. It's their energy that keeps it going. Now, Jim, how much effort do you need to get this throwing right? Because I've been watching a lot of them there and I'd love to have had to go at it, but I didn't want to break any windows around here. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of effort. The shoes are two pound in weight and you've got to pitch them 33 foot. And every, every day we go out against good players, even today, I learned some tips uh, of a guy from uh, Wexford, Johnny, and he told me where to aim for the pen, not to aim for the bottom, but the middle of the pen, and he said it should come right. Now you've got a lovely setup here, Seamus, at the Leeds Iris Centre, and of course we're just outside here in the field. Now, if you'd like people, more people to come along and join you and, and you know, get involved in this sport, what would you like to say to them? I'd like people that's retired, or even younger people, to join us, try it, and see if they enjoy it, because I know several people out there that are slow and are on their own, They'd love to be here, but the judges don't seem to want to make the effort. Yeah. And look, it was lovely there now. You had a lovely, uh, you could say, a picnic of food, but there was every kind of food here. Music out in the field while you were having your lunch and everything. It was fantastic. Yes, we have a good throwers. We've also got good women. They provide the food, and that attracts a lot of people. Good food attracts good company. Well, well done to you. You're doing a great job. Thank you very much, Martin. Yes, and without the facilities here at the Irish Centre and with this field, we would be struggling very much. We would never have got off the ground. Charlie, how long have you been involved in this horseshoe pitching? Uh, since the start, which is about seven years ago, and uh, it's more or less since Seamus Walsh started it off. And we got all involved and we all enjoyed very well. Now you're from Donegal, how long have you lived here in Leeds? I've been here since 1957, which is quite a long time. <laughs> Do you still get back to Donegal? We go back there about five times a year, to any show on. Okay. Von Cranach. Now the centre put on a lovely reception here today for you all, didn't they? Yes, that is correct and we've got to thank all the ladies that put on the group as well, the food. Excellent, excellent. Now, Sean, are you pitching today? Yes, I have been, yeah. How did you go on? Not so good. Not so good, no. We got is, there, is there room for improvement? Uh, yes. Now, no joking, this uh, horseshoe pitching is a wonderful way of building the community. There's so many people here today, and there's lots of people in the club watching out through the windows, enjoying the game as well. Yes, that's true, yeah. It's very good for the community and draws people together. And it's a hobby, it's, it's a pastime, it's good actually. Yeah. And, on a, and on a day like today, it's even better? Yeah, of course it is, yeah, you've got a crowd of people and 
the visitors from Ireland, the teams from Ireland, which is excellent, showing us how to throw. Yeah. They're mighty good actually, very good. And you've got a bit of Irish music going on there and people yeah. dancing here on the grass. That's right, yeah, which is very nice. More to the joy of the day, yeah. Well, well done. Well, listen, continue on to enjoy the day. Hope so, yeah. Michael, how long ago since you got involved in horseshoe pitching? I would say about 30 years. And down the years, it was along the road you started off first, but then it got international and all Ireland and all that. So we travelled to Dublin, Wexford, Galway, all over Ireland. And then in later years then, uh, we were to Luton for the international. We'd done there for so many years. And then down there they stopped throwing. So I thought we're on one weekend and Leeds, and I came down to the Irish Centre and we said we'd bring a team over and they were all delighted. So we've been coming over here now for maybe eight years. So you originally lived here in Leeds, didn't you? And you got married here and then you went back home. Yeah, that's right. I got married here in Leeds and then went back home because the children were ready to go to school. So we decided we'd go home and then we just stayed at home for... You decided then that you come back, introduce this sport here to the people in Yorkshire. I did, yeah. So we met the manager of the Irish Centre, and he was all delighted to bring a team over from Ireland. So we come over here once a year, and then they come back to to Donegal or Wexford maybe next year. So that's really good. Now, Michael, of course, this is a big sport, isn't it, in Ireland? Oh, it is. It's, it's very big. It's Well, it was organised officially, say, in 1970. Like Michael says there, before that, they played on the, the crossroads, like this was the Wexford team, danced on the crossroads, we'd say, at 1996. But it started off that way. Then 1970, it was an organised sport where every county, a lot of the counties in Ireland had their own county board meetings, had their annual AGMs, and it started from there and it generally moved around the country in that aspect of it. And you've had great success at this sport. Well, as a bus for starters, I'm, I'm playing a long time and I'm a type of a fella that <laughs> if I'm in something, I'm dedicated and I'm in it and I'll, I'll try. I always, you, like, there's no point in just going in for the sake of just playing and not caring. You've got yeah. to be dedicated and you know, put in a bit of practice. So I'm playing since 1972 and we have won a lot. A lot with the Woodsmen, like we got four in a row all Ireland club competitions, which is the main competition, I suppose, really at the end of the day. And uh, I was lucky enough to get a couple of all Ireland singles as well. Well done to everyone who travelled over from Ireland to take part in the weekend. And of course, it was a very special time for the Stapleton family. Now, Kylie's brand new Irish bar in Manchester has been open about eight months. And we caught up with Andrew Kylie to see how it's doing these days. Things have been going quite good for the last eight months. Um, it's been a, a hard process, but uh, a lot of hard work put into it. But the people of Manchester and uh, our tourists that come in as well seem to be happy and enjoy it there. So uh, all in all, it's been quite good, yeah. Now you've had some great nights in here. You know, you've got great Irish music here on a Sunday evening as well. But during the week and weekends, you've got a lot of live music. Yeah, we kind of uh, prime ourselves on the, the, uh, the live music here. Um, it's kind of a, a thing that Irish bars are seen to be done around the world. So in Manchester, we're no different. And uh, it's about getting new acts. We've got some great bands that are on there at the moment. And we're looking always to get new, new acts involved as well. Um, so it looks very steady. The people seem to like it. Um, we're always trying new things. Um, so it does work. So yeah, we do. Uh, you know, our live music it starts here now, coming into the summer, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. So uh, yeah, we're, we're building on it. And you've got a lovely food menu as well. 
Yeah, food is ticking over, a new chef in place here, so uh, summer menu is up at the moment. Um, a range from like, your light salads, your pizzas, chicken goujons, burgers, Irish stews, all day breakfast. So, I mean, we've got a wide variety there for everybody. Doesn't interfere with the belly too much on the drinking side of it, so you'll always fit a pint of Guinness in, which is great. On a lovely day like today, it's great to see people here in the bar. And of course, they're all watching the GA games at the moment on your big multi-screens. Yeah, uh, GA season's in full flow now, so we're obviously we're in the preliminary stages of the uh, of the different uh, championships. So uh, at the moment, I think Mead and Tyrone, but uh, I'm right, waiting on Ward for tomorrow anyway, so see how they get on. But uh, yeah, look, GAA is on every weekend now, Saturdays and Sundays. Um, so everyone's more than welcome to come in and cheer on their own county. People are out enjoying the sunshine, there's a buzz around the city, like, so it's great to have and you know, we've got the little beer garden here at the front and at the back, so you know it works, people can sit outside enjoying the sunshine. How is, all, how is all the folks back in Waterford? I know your mum and dad are back and forth here and you're back and forth there, but you're quite busy. Yeah, quite busy, yeah, so uh, back and forth a lot there, uh, they're all good, keeping the good side out, that's the main thing and uh, working hard, yeah. Well, look at Andrew, keep up the good work and we're looking forward to going in now and getting a nice cool beer in Kylie's Irish Bar. Perfect, look forward to it. So many Irish bars have closed down over the years. It's great to see Kylie's doing so well. Now we're going to take a short break. Welcome back. If you've got a story you'd like to share with us, contact me. The details are on the screen now. Now, since the Nile Mellon Trust was formed many years ago, they've built over 22,000 houses in South Africa. Well, recently, we caught up with Joan McCarthy and Fiona Malumba, who are travelling to South Africa to do some teaching, all with the Nile Mellon Trust. Trust was founded by Niall Mellon who was a, a very successful builder in Ireland who went on holiday to South Africa and uh, was appalled by what he saw in the townships and came back and said right I'm going to bring a whole lot of people out to do the building blitz. So for a number of years he brought up to 2,000 people to come over and build houses in South Africa for the people in the townships and the project was a great success and many of your list of readers will probably know a bit about it anyway. Um, and then eventually the South Africa government said to Niall, look, we need to look at schools. Schools is where it's at, really. And education is really going to be the key to take these people out of, out of poverty. So they asked Mellon if they'd get involved with schools. So the Building Blitz has been doing working with building schools. So a number of builders have come from Ireland, England, USA, etc., to build or modify current schools out there for the huge education system out there. And then the next initiative that Mellon decided was they needed to work in educating the teachers and training the teachers. And who better to tell other people to do than other teachers? <laughs> so they asked us, uh, asked for people from other countries if they'd be prepared to come and join the Teaching Blitz. So uh, I went out last year. I was one of the first 50 that went out last year. And uh, we survived and came back with a great experience. And so the second lot are going out this year. Fiona, what do you think you're going to expect when you go to South Africa this year? I think to begin with it's going to be a city of contrast. I think we're going to see the very rich and the very poor. We're going to be working in an area where children walk sometimes an hour to school and you know, but education is everything, it's their route to freedom. So we're going to see something very different. We're not going to see children sitting at a desk each. They're going to be crowded, first one in gets a seat and then they share. We're not going to see children with loads of resources but they're going to be learning and that's what it's about and we're going to help the teachers hopefully continue that in the future. Now the whole idea of you going out obviously is to educate the children out there but also to experience, you know, your own experience with them and theirs with you. Absolutely, I mean I think probably we'll get as much out of it if not more than they actually get from us. We'll be helping the children and the teachers to continue but what we bring back to our own schools will be quite amazing because we live in a privileged society and so we need to sometimes get our life into perspective and realise that there are lots of people out there with very little and what do we value? and we'll see what they value and bring that back. Yeah. Now, how long are you going for? We're going for a fortnight, which seems very short, 
but we hit the ground running. We arrive on the Saturday, we get going on the Monday morning and off we go for 10 days of working with the children every day. Then we work with the teachers during the evening and we work out what we need to do every day and then we'll take it from there. So Joan, of course, what was it like last year when you went out there? What experience did you bring home with you from South Africa? Um, I think the idea that education is a right for everybody. I think when you're in your own day-to-day -day routine, we're very comfortable here, aren't we? We've got books, we've got resources, we've got everything. And to suddenly see children who don't have those, who walk miles to come to school, who really want to learn because they see that as their way out and see education as like a real privilege changes your mindset. Now Fiona, uh, of course you've got to fund this to go out and you're trying to raise a few bob, aren't you, you two girls, to, to you know, pay for your costs out there and flights and back again. So how are you aiming to do that? Well the whole idea is that we, we take things out with us and so we have to fundraise. We have to fundraise just over £3,000 and we both have Just Giving pages which you can look us up, Raising for Melon Educate and they will direct you straight there and you can donate onto the page directly. Um, people have been very generous but as always we're always looking for more because the more we get the more resources we can take. Well there's 52 teachers in, in total going out this year. The majority are still from Ireland this year because I think Mellon being an Irish charity predominantly but the plan is to get more UK teachers that's what we want in the future. Really it just appeal to any teachers, uh, people who are in education, even teaching assistants who might be interested. We really need you because what you do will make such a difference to these people. Absolutely. Well done to Joan and Fiona and to everyone who takes part in such great work. And if you'd like to sponsor the girls, the details are on the screen now. Now, Father Paddy McMahon from St John's Roman Catholic Church in Charlton recently celebrated 50 years in the priesthood. And we were there to film this very special occasion. Father McMahon, many congratulations, celebrating 50 years in the priesthood. What a wonderful occasion and celebration you had here at St. John's last night. Oh, thank you, Martin. Thank you very much. It was a great, a great achievement, to be honest, I think. And maybe unknown to myself, I just, I just took it for granted. But it was tremendous to see the crowd of people there last night celebrating with us. A great occasion, 50 years. They loved it as well. Indeed, all the congregation here from around St John's turned out and from further afield and so many of your uh, colleagues, your, your other priests as well, friends come along. Yeah, there were quite a number of other priests, who, but many of them were moving on in years as well, but there were still well over a dozen of them there last night and uh, many of them were friends I've played golf with and known over the years, but they were all gathered together again to celebrate a great occasion. And and, and somebody pushed out the boat by making a lovely cake as well. Yeah, there was a lovely cake. I don't know, it was made up of every, covering every you know, part of my life, I'd say as such, from, well, the cake was the most important. And there were two of them. There was a sponge cake and a, and a, and a fruit cake one. Now tell me, where were you first ordained, Father? I was ordained at St. Patrick College in Carlow with some of the friends. There was a great crowd going on for the priest. I think there was 30 some of us ordained then, and that was one year. When I went to Maynooth, there was 99 of us went going on for the preacher that year. So you can show the change that's happened over the years, you know. But uh, I was ordained in Carlow and celebrated my first Mass in the Cathedral in Monaghan. Yeah. Well, you've given a great service to every parish you've been in. It's a testament so many people turned up here last night. And look at... You like to sing as well, don't you? Oh, no. Oh, well, I used to do a wee bit of singing, mucking about in the, in the other places, but uh, that's far behind. When you're 75 years of age, your voice is gone. You know, so. And you're a great Manchester United supporter, and of course you've been a big uh, fan of Alex Ferguson's and friends for many years. Yeah, I wish Alex very, 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 I hope he gets great, and, and he has improved. He's got home now, he's com in comfort again, and he needs peace and quiet. And he's always in our prayers. He could disagree. One of the most charitable men you'll ever come across is Alex Ferguson. Very thoughtful, and we could do with them back at Old Trafford even at the moment because, unfortunately, I think the, the football at Old Trafford is becoming more almost like Monaghan. Hold the ball, but forget that you have to score. But have you got any plans to go back for a rest to Ireland or a holiday? Oh, there's too many weddings in the whole month of June and July. Unbelievable, that's why I'll go over to the Galway races at the end of July for a day or two, but then I have to be back on the Friday for two weddings, Friday and Saturday. And 
in August, it'll be in the of August. But it'll be, listen, I'll enjoy it here and we'll have a holiday eventually when, when the opportunity comes. Well, Father, many congratulations. Celebrating Thank 50 you. years. Thank you, Mark. Well Thank done. You very much. God bless. Thank you all very much. And every blessing and thanks to all of you for being with me. And most likely your prayers have carried me through to this day. Thanks very much, everyone. God bless you all. Today is your special day. May good wishes all come. Joe, sadly, your wife, Cathy, passed away about nine months ago, but Father Mac meant an awful lot to her. Oh, he did. He used to come down once a week and bring her Holy Communion and everything. And, of course, at that stage, her faith meant an awful lot to her. She always felt a bit better, didn't she, when Father Mac was there? She used to like to see him coming. She used to have a crack with him. She enjoyed having a bit of fun with him and having a sh sharing a joke. Yeah, she used to love that, sharing the joke with him and that. Now, Marion, tell me a little bit about this photograph because there's a certain photograph that Cathy always loved. Yes, Cathy uh, saw the picture of uh, Father Mac and uh, Sir Alex at the back of the church. And she said to me one day, she said, I really like that picture, she said, and I would love to give that to, uh, uh, put it on canvas and give it to uh, Father Mac, she said, because he's so very good to me and he comes to see me regular. And uh, we reminisce about the uh, old times in St. Wilford's and St. Brendan's. So she said, I'm going to get that picture done for him and uh, present it to him. So uh, unfortunately, uh, Cathy died and uh, we, the picture wasn't ready. So we decided we would give it to Father Mac on the occasion of his uh, 50th, his jubilee of his ordination. And uh, I think he really, really likes it. Now, Jimmy, of course, a lot of presentations was made on the night. Yeah, quite a few. Very, it was a very good night, and Father Max seemed to be very happy. It all went very well for him. It was a great night overall. It was, and of course, the amount of people that come to the Mass, but the amount of people that come back to the Paris Centre after and celebrated there, and the music, the dance, and the food, it was good. Yeah, it was a great night, lovely buffet, uh, great atmosphere and everything. I couldn't ask for any more, really. But uh, Father Mac deserves everything because he is a very nice person and he looked after Cathy very, very well. Visits to the house, visits, uh, lifted her up completely when he came. She loved uh, to see him coming and have a laugh and a joke with him and everything. It was a great, uh, he was a great help to us when we needed him. Father Paddy is definitely a priest of the people. What a great achievement, and we wish him well in the future. Now, Henry McGlade is back next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock, and I'm here at half past seven with the Irish in the UK. Both shows are repeated on a Saturday evening between 8 and 9 p.m., all on Sky 192. Until next time, take care.